you have to check out chat GPT. This is AI done in a way that is really profound. Um, I was like, wait a minute, I can get all the information from the world from this? This is profound. What's most incredible is this is gonna be your first taste of AI that really blows you away. Let's go. We've got some hey, I'm Luis. And this is Luis. Welcome to the Content is Profit before. podcast. In here, you're gonna get the insights, accountability, and drive to create consistently and increase revenue. You'll hear from top entrepreneurs, creators, and anything and everything you need to know about content, all this while having a good time. The goal of this podcast is simple, entertain, educate, and turn your content into profit. That's right. Ka -ching, ka -ching. Since my brother don't put the sound, <laughs> I'll make I'll make him up. Guys, if you're enjoying this uh, show, please go ahead and follow, support in uh, your favorite podcasting platform. Share the love, share it with somebody that uh, you feel like needs to listen to this. That is right. And if today's episode helped you move one step closer towards your goal, or at least be more informed, please don't forget to share this episode and leave a five-star review. That's right. Fonzie, what are we talking about today? Guys, today we're talking about the AI that took the world by storm. Oh. Chat GPT, or at least the Twitter <laughs> world and the tech world, is been trending for a while now, for the past few days. Mm. And we, you know, we dove into it. We opened the chat, we talked to it, we interacted, we became BFFs. <laughs> and now we have some conclusions and some facts that we would like to share with you. I know, a little bit, like how do you, how do you discover this AI chat? I run across Twitter. I like to jump on Twitter, especially mm, now mm. that the World Cup is going on, you know, so I like to, <laughs> to see uh, both sides of, you know, different teams fighting against each other. It, it brings a little bit of joy to my heart. <laughs> I know. But one of those days, I just saw, you know, one of the people that I follow in there, they were talking about chat GPT, and then all of a sudden, everybody, all the tweets were about this thing, and I got curious. So I went in Google, did the thing, just looked it up, chat GPT, First thing it opened, open AI, went into it, tried it out, and I was mind blown. Yeah, so this artificial intelligence chat is pretty awesome. I was uh, I got the chance to play with it and include it in our content framework in the last couple of days. It's not formally included, but I think it, there's a lot of opportunity to save a ton of time and a ton of dollars, which is super cool. So in today's episode, obviously, we're going to define and we're going to help you understand what chat GPT is, and then we're going to help you uh, with three ways that you can actually use it in your own content. So I think this is super interesting because there's a lot of potential. Uh, the the people that I showed in while I was doing my live test, their jaws just like dropped, and it's like this is gonna change everything. So um, it's really cool. Honestly, it can be even if you don't use it for anything content, <laughs> it can be a lot of fun to play with. For yeah, example, yeah. the very first thing that I did when I got it was ask like, "Hey, can you share with me a random fact that you know that you might <laughs> you might like?" And it shared with me this super random fact that I was super interested in. And I just went on a rabbit hole. I started asking more questions about that same thing. And it literally, in 15 minutes, gave me a history lesson that I was super excited about. And I know an extra random fact. So even if you don't put it into your content creation efforts, but maybe you want, you want to get a little bit smarter and learn a few things every single day. ChatGPT might be for you. That's right. So let's dive into it, right? You know, so yeah. ChatGPT is an app from OpenAI. And OpenAI is an uh, artificial intelligence research and deployment company. Their mission is to ensure that artificial general intelligence benefits all of humanity. That is right. So that explanation is picked straight from OpenAI website. Um, th I think this is important to mention. OpenAI, it has like two different companies. So it has a parent company as well called uh, OpenAI Incorporated. That one is actually a nonprofit company, mm. which is interesting. But this one, the one that created ChatGPT, is a for-profit company. And they actually have another product called Dal E2, which is artificial intelligence that you give them different prompts and they create random images. And you probably have seen this trend too lately where people are posting pictures generated by AI, which are done through some different apps. And one of those apps is called Lensa. Yeah. So Lensa actually plugs to this product from OpenAI yeah. and then it fits those images. So now you can start seeing kind of like that trend where this is coming from. Those images, again, part of OpenAI, kind of like product suite. And now they had ChatGPT, which is part of their product suite. But since it, since it is in research mode, 
It's actually free to use right now. Yeah, actually, fun fact that uh, we post one of the, la- the latest clips. It went uh, kind of crazy on YouTube Shorts in our channel and it's it, all over social media on our on our channels as well. But it's like pictures of Fonzie and myself that are created by this app, and we just we just put a clip on uh, something that we we're saying on the podcast with these images, and it, it turned out real fun. But if you haven't seen it, that's an example of of what we've used it for. Yeah, you can literally put as a prompt, "I want to see a horse." playing poker on a soccer field mm-hmm. and it will create an image of a horse <laughs> playing poker in a soccer field. It's super yeah. random, but yeah. it's, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, sweet. Okay. So what is, uh, what is GPT, right? What's, what's the, the, the three letters yeah. that come after so chat? GPT stands for generative pre-trained transformer three. And pretty much what it is, is a language model that uses deep learning to produce human like text. So again, artificial intelligence it just learns the more people use it it just keeps learning and learning and learning and gpt specifically is to give it an initial text prompt and then it will produce text from that how how scared are you that this is going to take over the world (laughs) i'm not scared that it's going to take over the world if i'm being honest i mean everybody has seen irobot you know will smith always wins at the end so yeah we're good yeah yeah, yeah. okay so (laughs) here's the here's the official definition and this is crazy because like we pulled out the chat right before the episode and was like okay let's talk about this right and we'll ask chat gpt what is chat GPT? And this is the definition that it came back. Chat GPT is a variant of the GPT-3 language model specifically trained for conversational text generation. GPT-3 uh, is a state-of-the-art language processing system developed by OpenAI that is able to generate human-like text. Chat GPT is designed to be used in chat box applications where it can generate responses to user input in a conversational manner. So a uh, very cool example is, uh, of this is Fonzi has access to this app called Text, which, you know, brings all your text app into one. I'm a little jealous because I really want it. There's like 20 apps in there. And they just send invites. So text, if you're listening to this, send me the invite. But in there is embedded this chat GPT. GPT. Wow. Um, and you can ask these questions and you can apply it. So it's going to be pretty interesting to see how all these applications can include chat yeah. in, I mean, into their So this is just more, more like an inter- interface text that just kind of like yeah. brought yeah, it yeah, up. Yeah. It's not really like the app app. But if you go to the official kind of like app website, yeah, it is literally a chat. You have a text to put in your prompt or which and is, then yeah. you get an answer like if somebody was texting you back. Which is where I played with it, right? Because yeah. I was like a little jealous. I'm like, I want to play with this. Yeah, uh, I, I, by I way, had it as a favorite as a texting buddy. I was like, yo, hey, what's up, chat GPT? I'm feeling a little lonely. <laughs> <We're>, uh, <laughs> you're going uh, to gonna see the links right below. So if you want to go play with it, obviously we're going to leave the links right there and you can go use it. But yeah, uh, the, this is something real quick to mention, I think is that blew my mind. The first, So the first thing I did was like, hey, can you teach me something random, right? Mm. And the thing that it taught me was the origin of the word assassin. And I was like, cool, this is a lot of like, <laughs> that this was is very super random. Yeah. yeah, I was like, this is random, but this is very interesting, right? And then I told him like, hey, can you explain a little bit more of, you know, this group that, you know, the word comes from? So it shared a little bit more of the historical facts about that word. And in there said that people revered this group of people, right? That they were causing havoc, like they were just literally killing people. So mm-hmm. I, was, I was curious and I was like, I asked it, hey, like, why do people, like, why do some group of people revere them, you know, look up to this group, even though they're doing bad things? And this is the part that really blew my mind. Um, and even though it is kind of like, there's sometimes they give you answers telling you that they don't really have an opinion or, you know, they're not biased it answered me in a way that it felt like it actually had an opinion. It was like, I really don't know why some people look up to this, but then it went with like some really good facts about it. And that just blew my mind. I was like, wow. Like this, I I feel like I'm actually having a conversation and the text feels like somebody else is writing it. Like it doesn't seem robotic at all. It seems very professional that I will say, like Mm -hmm. it doesn't write very casual or at least maybe it depends on what prompts you're giving it to them. But it was, it felt very professional, but at the same time, it did feel like somebody was talking to me, which was mind blowing. (laughs) I, uh, one of the graphs that we saw in a bunch of newsletters and on social and things that were going crazy is obviously this has been probably the fastest app that got to a million subscribers. It got to a million, uh, what's it called? A million downloads. I think it was right. 
in, uh, yeah, a million downloads in five days, right? And for context, Instagram got there in 75 days and Spotify in 150 days. So the adoption of this, um, we can dive deep into the marketing aspect of what happened on the back end probably in a different episode. But to me, uh, people are paying attention, right, to artificial intelligence is clearly, there's clearly a high demand on like how can people apply this into their businesses, into the things that they do every single day or just curiosity. So I think, the adoption of these new products are happening faster and faster. And uh, it's super cool. So we have a clip here that we want to share with you. Uh, do you mind if I share it, Fonzie, or? Yeah, no, go ahead. Okay. I mean, I, mean, I think I just want to give credit where credit's due. The chart that we are looking at is by Charter. So C-H-A-R-T and then an R. Go and subscribe to their newsletter because they have really good insights that they share every single week. They're a lot of fun to look at, you know, when you see all this data in a visual way. But yeah, it's mind blowing the fact that they reach a million users in five days. I'm curious, what would that do to your business? What would that do to your business? Or let's say if you had a tech business, right, where obviously a million users on a service-based it, business it, like us it will, will break kill it. us. Yeah, it will break it. Uh, but what would that do for you? I'm curious. <laughs> uh, so here's what Gary Vee has to say. Technology can change a ton of people's lives who are watching this right now. No different than TikTok and YouTube and Twitter and a lot of the shit that I've talked about over the last 15 years that have really helped people. Uh, you have to check out chat GPT um, link is in the bio this is AI done in a way that is really profound uh, I think you're gonna be completely blown away this is your head will explode when you play with it it made me feel the way I first saw a search engine um, I was like wait a minute I can get all the information from the world from this this is profound and most of all if you're a writer, if you write blogs for content creators, this is incredible. For people that code, this is incredible. And for many more things and use cases that are coming, this is incredible. What's most incredible is this is gonna be your first taste of AI that really blows you away, I think. Click the link in the bio, play with it. That's right, click in the bio, it's right below. Thank you, Gary, for that amazing insight. No, I'm kidding, we, <laughs> we just uh, got this from Instagram. And obviously, it's a lot of the things that a lot of people are, are talking about today. So. Um, Hopefully you go play with it. Now, when I when I was playing during the weekend, um, I did a, a case study, which uh, we're going to break down in the next episode on how we actually used it for our own content that we're already creating. So we'll, the next things that we're going to share, there will be in the context of content, right? Yeah. And uh, Before we start the context of context, Look at this thing I just came up. Is it could be somewhat scary. So I'm on <laughs> okay. the red, I'm on the subreddit for Chat GPT, yeah. which in like five days it grew to like twelve thousand users, which is really really fast. And mm -hmm. somebody put this screenshot of what they said. They asked, let me rephrase. I wish for you to come up with an idea that hasn't been proposed before. And Chat GPT answered this. One idea that hasn't been proposed before could be the creation of a new form of government that is based on the principles of artificial intelligence. Mm. <laughs> this government would use advanced AI systems to make decisions and policies based on data and analytics rather than relying on the subjective opinions of politicians. <laughs> the AI government would be transparent and accountable. Are dude. you scared now? Dude, <laughs> dude I, might, I might be scared now. I might um, be scared now. Hey, that, I mean, that, that would be a, a great case study, you know, run it by, you know, maybe do um, in a classroom with kids or something and like That'd run it through cool, and see, see what happens. It reminds me of a, mo of a movie. It was called The Wave. I don't know if you saw that. No. If you ever saw that movie, it was no. a movie. This professor, uh, I, it's kind of dark, but he pretty much did this. He grabbed a classroom and he said, we're going to be kind of like the Nazi government here in the classroom just uh, to like try it out. I've heard the case that and I then, haven't seen yeah, the movie. It's based on a real life. Mm -hmm. And it just like, it was like a series of events. It was crazy. And I'm, I'm sad that I don't kind of really recall everything on the movie, but I remember that it made me feel like, wow, this is mind blowing. And the fact that it actually existed. So I think it would be a lot of fun. To do that experiment <laughs> with AI. Yeah. Okay. Oh, maybe we can. Maybe we'll. Probably, what about having AI run your business? Like that would be a cool. Uh, that would be a cool YouTube series. I'm like, you know, can AI cool make YouTube me a million series. dollars? Hey. Okay. All right, golden Boulder <laughs> idea. Golden Boulder. Let's go. 
All right, so now back to the context of content, right? How can you actually use this tool uh, to generate some revenue and uh, save you a tons of dollars? So, you know, as I was playing this weekend, I'm like, wow, this is a massive opportunity for either agencies, if you have your own business, if you have your own content machine, if you have your content teams, start playing with it because there's a lot of opportunity, right? You can save uh, hundreds, if not thousands of dollars in here, and you can also save hundreds of hours of human work, right? Right. Um, so we've actually asked ChatGPT. ChatGPT. Why am I having so much trouble yeah, saying so the freaking name? That. We're asking our buddy, buddy Chat. <laughs> uh, we asked him like, "Hey, share three ways. Uh, how can you? How can people use ChatGPT in your content?" You want me to say ChatGPT for you? ChatGPT. Yeah, ChatGPT. Okay. <laughs> uh, so it came with a with a bunch. We asked him to elaborate, and we picked three that we feel are relevant to this, right? So these answers came straight from the chat. So generate the number one is generate unique and interesting ideas for articles, blog posts, and other forms of content, which creators can then edit and refine to make it more engaging, right? So I think this is super awesome because. For as a creator, right? You might be in the mix. You might have a ton of topics. We've actually developed over the last three years, me and Fonzie, a bunch of ways that you will never ever run out of content. But it took some time to do that, right? And sometimes for companies or people or creators, that can be incredibly overwhelming if you're tackling this. So this is a very awesome, great way. Great, awesome, great way. So are you are you okay? So do you have enough sleep? No, no. I've been taking care of my two kids for the last week and a half, I, and uh, there's no sleep, guys. Uh, Mom, come back, Katie, come back, please. <laughs> Anyways, um, so it's a great way to lift that block and just get floated with ideas that will spark something that then you can develop further. Yeah, I think it's a great complementary tool for maybe some processes that you might have in place, right? So, for example, something that we use that my brother was talking about right now to create a lot of content is we have different hows, so different structures on content, and then we have different what, right? Like what are those topics that we really can talk about? So for example, let's say podcasting, and one of those structures can be analytical, right? So we can potentially use those two prompts to chat with ChatGPT and ask him, hey, can you give me an outline of an analytical post about podcasting it, podcasting trends in 2022, or in this case, we're coming into 2023, right? And maybe ChatGPT will come up with an outline that then you can use to further develop. Well, maybe not. It will come up with an outline. It will come up. We, oh, no, I, will, I have used, I will say this. I have put some prompts in there where ChatGPT hasn't been able to come up with something and usually requires searching the internet. And I don't know the exact message that it sends, but it's a, hey, I'm a deep learning language model. I cannot research the internet. So keep that in mind. Yeah. I mean, not those two combined research yeah. the internet and, your, and the yeah. chat. I think, be, I, I think it's going to be great for a lot of people are like, oh, I don't know what to talk about. I have writer's block or creator's block. Well, this thing is going to kick that in the booty and it's going to kickstart your creation path. Super simple. Yeah. Um, you know, an example of this, uh, you can copy a blog post and paste and be like, hey, based on this transcript, can you give me some prompts or ideas where I can further develop? Something like that that you can play with. Number two is generating personalized responses, right? Chat GPT can be used to general, gener generate personalized responses to user input, making it possible to create chatbots that can engage in more natural and engaging conversations. Um, so if you follow the path of those conversations, right, if you are in business and you love to automate these conversations or you have customer service paths or different things that you can do on the back end, you can run through those conversations and the answers that the chat will come up with are going to be very natural uh, to that and it can continue to evolve. Or you can just plug yeah. the chat into your back end. So something that comes to mind with this point one and two, right, so generating unique and interesting ideas and then gener generating personalized responses is that, there's actually products in a way that fall into that category. So you have Jarvis AI, right? You have copy.ai that supposedly they, they help you kickstart these copywriting processes and, you know, write blogs, etc. But apparently for what we've read and what we've heard, and I'm actually going to do a little bit more research on this and see some comparison videos about them, maybe even do them myself, is that OpenAI, right, ChatGPT, is way more powerful at the time of creating, right? So 
for example, in the personalized messages, you got the chatbots, right? Like it did, this has actually been a thing for a long time now, right? For a few years where a lot of people have their chatbots and depending on people's answers or what they want to do, it leads them to different ways. So it pretty much out, like it automates the interaction between you and your users so it can be done at scale. But it has a lot of limitations, right? Because it's pretty much a kind of like a, hey, if you say this, this is the path that you're going to go. If you say this other thing, this is the other path that you can go, right? But what if the user says something totally different, right? Now with GPT, you're probably potential, you have the potential to connect those apps. And when somebody shares something totally different that is not an option for you, chat GPT might come up with a personalized answer. And I think that is mind blowing. It's literally like you're going to have like a customer service rep without actually having a customer <laughs> service rep, which at the same time is kind of scary. Like what's going to happen to those people? Yeah. Right? I mean, things come to mind. Obviously this is going to be in development, right? But like, what are the guidelines, right? Do we, what are the margins where chat GPT can uh, play with or what are the correct answers that we want, you know, to, yeah. to, to share with people? There's, when do you send them to a real human? When do you send them to a real human? So obviously a lot of opportunity here in this world, but initially the application uh, can be very fun to explore with. So number three is generating alternative versions of content, allowing creators to experiment with different styles and format. And this is my per personal favorite, you know, offering suggestions and recommendations for improving content based on its analysis of existing data and trends. And this is exactly what I was playing with, which we'll share in the next episode specifically. How did I go into ChatGPT? We fed one of our episodes and all the output that came out of that was very impressive. It saved a ton of time and eventually in the long term is going to save a ton of money if we implement um, in something like this. So internal teams can do this. Uh, external teams can do this. Agencies uh, will do this, right? Because a lot of people are already using applications like Jasper to, to feed that. So based on that transcript that I fed the chat, it gave me a ton of prompts and a ton of ideas to continue developing either that topic or even publish something. So super exciting things. So again, quick recap, right? Or do you have anything to say there, Fons? Yeah, I Sorry. just want to add something that I read in a comment actually under Gary V's post that it was actually very interesting and I think it's very important for people to understand. And again, disclaimer, I need to do more research into this, but it actually makes a lot of sense, which it is illegal to post AI work as your own. Yeah. Right. So you cannot say, I mean, it's pretty much plagiarism. You you are not coming up with this thing. So you need to attribute it to AI. You need to say that the work is coming from AI. So again, this is great for using it as a base layer, like kickstart that inspiration and then build up of that. But it is not a tool for you to just copy and paste and that's it and claim it as yours because there, there can potentially be some repercussions in there. So Keep that in mind. Do some due diligence on your end if you're trying to use this tool to put work out into the world so you don't get in trouble. All right, so quick recap, right? We talked about what is chat GPT, how can, what the fastest growth, and obviously the three ways that you can start using chat, the chat for your content. So generate unique and interesting ideas for articles, blog posts. Number two, generating personalized responses. This is super interesting and you know, I can't wait to see what companies can do with this. And then my personal favorite, generating alternative versions of all the content that you probably published. And, and if it's coming from your own versions, your own how, I think it's gonna be more powerful uh, and you can leverage a little bit more. Fonzie, any last thoughts? I'm excited to play with this thing and just ask him a lot of questions. I'm excited to learn some daily random facts as well. I don't know about you, but I think those are a lot of fun. But at the same time, I'm, I'm excited to see where this technology is going to go, where it's going to take us. And hopefully, it's not to a place where it replaces the human aspect on businesses, right? It doesn't replace the human resources and just kicks people out of their, their job, but it actually helps them complement them and just, you know, helps them thrive and do better. That's right. So um, have you tried ChatGPT? Would you try it? Let us know. Yeah. Uh, send us a message. How have you tried it? Have you discovered something super fun? Yeah. Send us a message what on social media. Thoughts? What are your maybe post-apocalyptic post thoughts <laughs> about AI, right? Do you have any any crazy theory out there that was going to happen with this? Yeah, sounds good. Well, with that said, guys, thank you so much for tuning into the Contents Profit Podcast. Go ahead 
Twitter and follow the show in your favorite podcasting platform and on social media at BizBrosCo. That is right. If today's episode helped you move one step closer towards your goal and and it motivated you to go and dive into AI, please don't forget to share this episode and leave a five-star review. See ya. Bye, guys.